This is 900 dollars, 100 to 400 millimeter f5 to 6.3 Sigma telephoto lens. This lens caught my eye, just the right size and weight for travel photographers, and I decided to give it a try on full frame and the APS-C sensor. I'm now on a photography trip in Georgia, and this Sigma lens is gonna enjoy the trip with me. I will be focusing on landscape at most, and I believe telephoto lenses are underrated in landscape photography. I see most photographers tend to make wide landscape photography. Definitely, you should try telephoto lenses as they introduce new and different perspectives that you have never experimented with before, especially if you're bored with your regular lenses. Omahi, oh and in this video, guys, I'm going to drive you through my experience with the Sigma 100 to 400 mm lens, so you make up your mind if this lens works the best for you. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. It's weird how Sigma sells such a telephoto lens without a tripod collar, they decided to have it on shelf for an extra $130. But you can get a third party model from iShoot for $50 and just 50 grams heavier. You need to get one when using the camera on a tripod. Do not put your camera mount at risk. See how long the lens is at full extension at 400 mm. It's also quite heavy to keep it on the camera on its own. We have about 1.2 kilograms, 2.6 pounds. Get yourself a tripod collar and put your mind at rest. And what's more impressive is the lens can fit easily in my Manfrotto backloader backpack with a camera and cage. It's not like any other compact telephoto lens I've seen. In the Sigma 100 to 400 mm lens, we get two image stabilization modes. Auto to manual focus switch button, a custom button, a focus distance limit switch, and a 67mm filter size. And most importantly, a zoom lock switch button to prevent the lens from extending accidentally. If you're watching me for the first time, on this channel we make camera and lens reviews for both photography and videos. Let's become friends, and I would be happy if you support the channel. Thank you. Even though the Sigma 100 to 400 mm lens is made for Sony full frame cameras, it shares the same mount with the APS-C crop sensor cameras, such as the 66 and 6400 models. And the same Sigma lens becomes now 150 to 600 mm. Wow. So today the 6600 camera is joining the experience, and if you're going crop sensor, I highly recommend getting only this model because it has built-in sensor image stabilization, a major feature needed for such telephoto lenses. Alright, here we have two images of a cliff at 400mm f6.3. The A74 image is on the right and the 6600 camera is on the left. And when zooming in to 100%, I can tell the full frame image is remarkably sharper than the same lens on the APS-C sensor. Now this is another example, 400mm f8. Again, the A74 image is on the right and the 6600 is on the left. Apparently it's clear the A74 images are way sharper than the other ones. No wonder, as this lens is made for full frame sensors at first, and I don't mind using the lens on a crop sensor cameras if extra reach is needed, and probably that's an advantage in wildlife photography. Some variable aperture lenses, for example it starts at f3.5, and it jumps to f4 right away when turning the zoom ring a bit. And I really hate that in this type of lenses, and now we'll check the Sigma 100-400mm to lens, variable aperture at different focal length, and I hope it's satisfying. At 100mm we get f5, f5.6 at 115mm, and f6.3 from 235mm all the way to 400mm. This video is sponsored by Hooksounds.com. Hooksounds has a huge music library, intros, and sound effect library. And with one single license, you can use the music anywhere, anytime, whether on the internet or commercial. And you get different music versions as well. No third party is involved, and all music are made in-house. Check it out, and if you like it, use the coupon code OMATEN and enjoy 10% off on unlimited downloads. We'll keep the link down below. 
telephoto lenses fits in many categories. You can do sports, wildlife, event coverage, but here in my video, I'm gonna make it in landscape and cityscape photography. And the same results should apply to any other category. Now, let's jump to the computer and check the pieces I made with the big wing. There are no doubt, having the flexibility to change from 100 to 400 mm opens the opportunity to shoot from different perspectives. Some compositions look the best at 100 mm, while others, like this one here for example, look awesome at full zoom 400 mm. Because we have a hero subject to focus on. See this one? Shot at 200 mm. Awesome. Also, I like it in portrait orientation and a quick crop made it even look better for my phone wallpaper. Well, in some tourist places, you need some photoshop to remove the crowd. Oh, um, see the parking lot there? The photos I'm gonna show you next were captured from that spot. Now, see before and after photoshop. There are, <laughs> there are no more people. This was at 170mm. And boom, 400mm. Another beautiful shot, another composition. Well, let's have both images, the 170 and 400 mm side by side. And I would like to show you that the 400 mm image is softer than the 100 mm focal length. Anyway, we'll do a full sharpness test later in the video. However, I would like to highlight that I see no real difference in compression between 100 and 400 mm in landscape photography. Would you like to take a second and guess which one is 100 and which is 400 mm? That was 4 seconds, I believe. The image on the right shot at 100 mm and the other one at 400 mm. I just told you, you can't really pick that up because in the 400mm image, the mountain is too far compared to the image shot at 100mm. And it's worth mentioning that when shooting far mountains, for instance, at 400mm, some images might look with less contrast because of the atmosphere haze. So you need to make some adjustments and make it look awesome. And if the mountains are far from your place, you get a beautiful city to capture. And the blue hour is my favorite hunting time. I almost forgot talking about the autofocus speed, never mind because this lens has an outstanding autofocus performance, it never hesitates and right to the point. Here we have a viewfinder recording for the autofocus performance when switching from close to far subjects. It's very essential having optical steady shot or image stabilization in telephoto lenses as your hand shakiness will show more at long focal length. Now the Sigma 100 to 400 mm lens offers four stops of stabilization and two stabilization settings. So far in the second stabilization option, the optical steady shot gets to work only when clicking the shutter button. And I do prefer the first stabilization option as it's always on. Now we'll keep you with some samples shot at different focal length. Starting at 100mm, image stabilization is off. 100mm, OS1. 100mm, OS2. 400mm, no image stabilization. 400mm, OS1. 400 mm OS2 I always like to deeply check my lenses sharpness at different apertures and at some point will know my lenses better At 100 mm I got f16 always at the left and will change the apertures in the images on the right side only Now we have a 5 a 5.6 which is slightly sharper in the center. F8 and F11 seem to have the same image quality as F5.6 in the center. And regarding the image quality at corners, we'll make the same play here as well. Starting with F5, now F5.6, F8, and finally F11. Well, F8 is fine, but F11 and F16 have the best image quality at sides and corners. At 200mm, I'm gonna make it a little bit quicker here for you. F5.6 is always fixed on the left side of the image, 
and apparently it has the best image quality in the center. F8 is a little bit lower, while F11 and F16 are a bit softer. And on the sides, F8 and F11 are remarkably sharper than F5.6 and F16. And the 300mm F6.3 is slightly sharper than F8 in the center, F11 is softer, and F16 is much more softer. And at corners, eventually F16 is better than F5.6. However, F8 and F11 gets the best rate in my opinion. And finally, at 400mm, I noticed some distortion here. And to be honest, I didn't see that earlier when testing the lens in the field. Now, F6.3 has the best image quality in the center among F8, F11, and F16. All of them are sharp, but F6.3 is the best. While F8 and F11 have better image quality at corners. I spent a beautiful week with this lens and I'm glad I got pretty nice images. Definitely the lens is gonna stay in my collection. I love telephoto landscape photography. It's totally different than any other focal length. I hope this video helped in making your decision. Show me a thumbs up if you found this very helpful and bump that subscribe button for more camera gear reviews. This was Omar and see you guys in another one.